Hello everyone, my name is Sarah and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for joining me here today. Well, I mean, aside from my voice, I'm doing fantastic, but okay. So today we're going to create a to-do app with React Symphony and Material UI. But first off, we're going to get through the installation process of all the things that we're going to need. So let's do that first. Um, this is going to be separated in multiple parts, so it's easier-ish to follow. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. So. First of all, you're going to need to install a ton of things. So first of all, you want to get Symfony set up. So for, for this, you need to install PHP first, 7.2.5 or higher. You need to install Composer and then, of course, Symfony itself. You can find all this on the Symfony website, on the documentation, setup, and then here in the bottom it is. So let's go for PHP first. So you want to go to the php.net website slash downloads, Windows downloads, and then get the zip folder download that and uh, go to your downloads folder. There it is, unpack it. Once you have unpacked it, it will be available here, right there. And you want to get all this stuff, cut it and move it into C drive uh, and give a folder of the version that you have or something and paste that in there. Then once that is done, you need to go into Windows Start and search for environmental variables. So in tick, uh, putting in MV, we'll just give that option already in the search bar. Environmental variables go in here, system variables, path, and inside here, you want to give the link or the path to that folder where PHP is put in. You want to include that. Uh, another thing I would recommend installing is Yarn. Installing Yarn is pretty easy for Windows. Uh, for Mac OS and Linux, I'm sure you can figure that stuff out for yourself. It is pretty easy using Homebrew for Mac OS and apt-get or wget for uh, Linux. Uh, so you want to install Yarn as well, which is a nice, easy, fast way to get packages, just like npm. But if you want to use npm instead, you can do that as well. We're going to be using Yarn mostly. Um, and you want to get Git, of course, for your version control, that sort of thing. Set up a GitHub or GitLab, whatever you prefer, and uh, set that up. Now, after that is done, you want to get Composer. You want to run the Windows Composer.setup. Uh, for macOS and Linux, you need to do the command line installation, uh, depending on what you have. You're going to have to do that, uh, although there's probably also an easier way to get it. I'm not sure. I I think this is the, the way you have to do it for Linux as well as Mac OS. But of course for Windows we get a simple setup uh, thing to do. And in there you also want to check mark that you want it to be a global variable. So you can access it through the command prompt, which is very important. So with that being done, with Composer being set up, with PHP getting installed, Git being set up, we should now be able to download Symfony. So go for the Symfony, install Symfony. And there it is. You just have to go for Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, which one you're using, download the setup exe, and it again sets up a global variable for you to use. Then you also want, like I said, a GitHub that has a link to that repository of yours that you want to use. I'm just going to copy that. And what we're going to do then, after that is all set up, is go into a new location. So let's go into my code here videos. This is where I want to create it. And I'm just going to open up PHP Storm, which is going to be my preferred program of using for coding. You can use any other ones that you want to use. I'm going to recommend using this. If you are a student, you can get it set up through a student program. If you want to use it, so you can go for JetBrains student and the top search result is right here. And you can go through that process, apply them with your student account, say how long you will be uh, uh, studying for, and you'll be able to use all of their applications that are super cool and definitely recommend. So we're gonna be using PHP Storm. Sorry, I'm talking so fast, but we have a lot to cover. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how we're gonna do that. So with PHP Storm set up and that folder, I'm gonna drag that video folder into here. And what we first need to do is uh, go into the terminal here. And I hope you guys can read this. Uh, go into the terminal here. And what I want to do is I want to run uh, 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 a command from Symfony to create an app. So we're going to do Symfony new, and then to do app, and then dash dash full to create a full on standard web app. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, actually, what did I do here? Sy I typed it wrong. Sim Symfony, there we go. Symfony new to do app double dash full to create a full standing uh, web application. 
So let that run for a second. We're on an SSD, so it's pretty fast. On a hard drive, this is gonna take forever. I've already done it. It's really it's really slow, but here with an SSD, it is actually quite manageable. So it should be almost about done right now. And there we go, it's set up now. So that was relatively fast at like 15 seconds to where we stopped talking there and cut the video and there we go. So with that set up, we now have a folder inside here. So what I'm gonna do now, just to make it easy, is gonna close project and we're gonna go into that videos folder and then drag the to-do app in here. Why is so that whenever I open the terminal, I will always be in this to-do app folder, which is important. After that, we're gonna need something to compile all this code and start using JavaScript and React and all that sort of stuff. So we're gonna have to do composer require and then say uh, encore. So composer require encore to get the encore package set up. And you can also have a Symfony plugin with PHP Storm. We're not gonna need that. And uh, there we go, that's it set up. So now we have access to assets as well as the webpack config.js. Inside here, you want to go to the bottom and turn on or uncomment enable react preset. Very important. Uh, let's see, there is some weird reading thing going on here. It is not reading a bunch of this stuff, but should be fine, theoretically. And uh, once that is set up, we also want to get a local database set up. So .env .test, or actually, no, sorry, .env, copy, paste, and we're gonna put local behind that. And we wanna set it up to go to our own database, which is my case, is gonna be root with password root. And the database name is gonna be, uh, what was it? I think I set it up as unsure. Let's go to uh, SQL Workbench real quick. Uh, workbench uh, to set up a database you're probably going to want to use something like MariaDB so MariaDB for people who use Windows it's going to be download and you want to get the download MariaDB server that's what you want to use uh, and that's going to be able to run you know it's uh, going to be able to run a um, a server with a database attached on your computer so this is my current one let's see so the service uh, user root root uh, and the name is gonna be, well, actually that is this the, 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 the database already. The database is all right here. So we got one for to-do app right here, got one for another one right here. So I'm gonna rename, I'm gonna make a new database here. And uh, let's go, uh, let's see, new database, create a new schema in the connected server, yes. So we're gonna create a new database and we're gonna call this one um, video underscore to-do underscore app that'll be it apply create new one there we go we created a new database right here uh, that we can access now through here so we're, instead of the database name we're going to do video to do app relatively simple uh, again with that database uh, login root and username root uh, we can set up you can set up anything for that what you want but this is a local test environment so we're just going to keep it like this and um, with that all set up and I know that's been a lot of stuff really. <laughs> uh, now we need to use yarn install to get all the packages set up properly, I believe. So it's gonna get all the packages from the note modules that we need. So it's gonna go through the composer JSON where are all the dependencies are listed and it's gonna install all those dependencies using yarn install or npm install if you prefer. And that will create a, or should create a node modules folder, although I'm not getting it right now. Don't know what's up with that, but we'll see about that later. So what we need to do now is create a way for us to get into this. So first of all, I wanna run a server. So I'm just gonna close that terminal right there and I'm gonna open up a new terminal. I'm gonna rename the session Symphony. So it's really easy to locate. I'm gonna rename this one to Encore and I'm just gonna rename this one to uh, Commands something like that uh, sorry and four there we go so symphony what are we going to run in here symphony ser symphony space server start uh, sim ser server colon start and that will run a server here on the location of the web browser so i'll go there right now and that's where we get this page now we don't actually want to use this page we want to use a completely different page of course but but that will go later and in order to get all the uh, like tracking of the files going, we want to use yarn and core def double dash watch. And that's gonna watch the files and anytime a file updates, 
Uh, but first, before that, we need to actually get React going because we've enabled the React preset, but in order to use it, we need to use at level preset React. So that's what we're going to need to do as well. So what we're going to search for is Symfony React install. And let's see what we get here. Enabling React JS. These are the commands that you need to run. So we're going to just going to copy paste them. Just going to copy and paste them into the commands here. So it's going to run that one. It's going to run the second one and when we, when we press enter that is installed and finally run yarn installed installed all the packages and there we go so with that being done we can now use encore should be able to let's see yes so yarn encore dev double dash watch and it's compiled successfully so now we can compile the files and watch is going to make sure that it's going to like update itself every time a file changes so every time a file is being saved that there's any changes it will recompile all the code for us now that was a handful now what are we going to do now just really quickly while the video is rounding up because we're busy with a couple minutes now and it's a lot of information you probably paused a tons of times through this video already we want to set this all up. You probably have tons of questions already. So uh, put those in the comments down below if you need to actually. But hopefully this should have gone all smoothly. Uh, if not, I'm probably have to, gonna have to set up a virtual machine and see how it goes there. Because, I mean, it took me a long time to install this stuff too. I've been there, okay? I've been there. But for Windows, this should have been just fine. So... Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the bin console. So we're going to have to use PHP and then bin slash console. Now, this is created in here. So bin console. This is a little program that's been built into here. Uh, so that's what we want to run. And you need to put the PHP prefix on here unless you're using Mac OS or Linux. In that case, PHP is localized globally and you don't have to use the PHP prefix. It will just run. But in my case, it is not so we need to still use the php prefix so php bin slash console make make controller and we're going to give it a name and we're just going to call it index so what that does is it's going to create in the source folder a controller the index controller and it has a link here to index so what if we were to go there right now let's go to our thingy here slash index and there we go the index controller is right there now, we don't want it to actually show this. Um, we actually want to change this. Uh, so let's go to the template because it created a template. It created here a template index HTML twig. And let's see about this. Actually, I also want to remove this index portion. Uh, it uses something called routes, which are very cool. Um, and we're going to use, we're going to disable that index so that now I can just go to this standard one. And it will overwrite the symphony one. So there we go. Now we instantly go to the index controller when we visit that particular uh, location. So next up, what we need to do is uh, go into the template. So the template is right here. Templates, base.html.twig. And what I want to do here is I want to move the style sheets here to the bottom. Uh, together with the JavaScript below the body. And what I also want to do is, or actually this is the base one. Uh, which we're going to come to in just a second. Uh, but here in the index one, we want to delete the entire body. So the entire body will be deleted. And instead, we want to create a div. So we're just going to create a div with the ID root. Okay, that's all we want to do. We just want to create an, a, a div with the ID root. And the reason we do this, uh, let's see, I'm just checking this will work in some browsers. Okay, we'll give it, we'll give it this then. Uh, so we want to use this so we can target it later. We're going to change the title here to to do app so we can easily identify it. So now if we were to go in here, we can see that the title changes. Uh, this is all different looking now and it's empty. And what we want to do now is link to those assets. So assets in here, there's CSS and JS ones, app CSS and app JS. Uh, it's just some basic stuff in here. And in order to make sure that it's working, we can see a console lock being registered here. And it's going to require a CSS file that puts the background to light gray. But currently it's not using that because the background is, hatch is really, really white. So in order to get this working, we need to actually look for, uh, and this is a lot of stuff at once, I know, but we need to look for encore require, let's see, encore require, um, JS, CSS, something like that. Let's see, setting up your project, first result, uh, and let's see, this should be somewhere here. There's this week. Here we go. So this is the one that we need. So inside style sheets, you need to include this. 
So insult style sheets. I'm gonna include this, which is uh, within two uh, curly brackets and core underscore entry underscore link underscore tags, uh, parentheses, single quotes app, and that will make sure that it's gonna load all these files instantly. So these are gonna be the base files that everything is based on and we can add any other files that we want to and reference them inside app.js. So that's that. And then also styles. So that's the same one for, uh, or sorry, I'm doing this wrong. Uh, this is entry core links app. Sorry, that should be in JavaScript. The one in style sheet should be this one. Uh, or actually, no, I got it right. I got it right. I got it right. Oops. So uh, for JavaScript, it's encore underscore entry underscore script underscore tags and then the same one app in parentheses and single quotes. So <coughs> now that is set up. Now let's reload the web page. Let's reload the web page. And there you see the background turned gray. And if we look at the console, we can see hello webpack and core edit me in assets js .app .js. There we go. So it's all set up now. We can start coding our app. Uh, but first of all, what I really want to do is still First is set up that Git repository. So the Git init is already set up. The only thing that we need to do is uh, set up a remote. So let's see how we're going to do that. Uh, to, 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 to Git. And first of all, we need to set up. Let's see if we search for uh, to search to do everything using double shift. Let's see remote. Let's see remotes. There we go. Uh, and we want to add one. It's going to be origin and it's going to be this link. There we go. So we've added that remote. Now we need to add all these files. So what we're going to add here is assets. So we're going to go through git add on assets and I'm going to go through the source one as well. Git add uh, templates as well. Git add and let's see what else do I need here. Uh, it would be really nice to have access to the webpack config file as well. So we're going to add that one, uh, yarn lock, all this stuff, the local one, I mean, local would not have, uh, would not be required, but everything else should be. So we're just going to get add those as well. There we go. Everything set up pretty beautifully. And now we can do shift alt K no, um, windows is different. So. VCS up here, git, and we're going to do commit. Where's commit? Commit file. Uh, or actually, uh, let's just do double shift commit. That'll be easier because then it takes everything that we've already selected. Uh, we're going to set a commit, commit message, initial commit. Pretty simple. Uh, and let's see, we can reformat, rearrange code if needed, optimize imports. For the first one I do, I will do that in case of, actually, no, let's not do that. Uh, from code analysis, no, check to do, we're not going to need that either. Uh, reformat, I mean, I reformat everything myself, so don't worry about that either. And uh, that's it. So we're going to commit this and then we're going to push. So we're going to double shift and then push. So we can push this to the repository and we need to log in. So I need to log into my GitHub. So let me do that. So get up my username and get up my password, set that up, log in and push successful. So now if we reload this page, there we go. Everything is set up and that's the initial commit. And that's everything set up that we need for the upcoming videos. So this was a long ish video, but it's a ton of information. So if you have any questions, please let me know if there are any road bumps, please let me know. Uh, and I'll clarify them using a virtual machine because well, I'm sure that some of the installation stuff is not as quite as fresh as I remember. So let me know in the comments down below what you think, uh, or actually just ask tons of questions if you need them. And uh, yeah, let's get started on making this to-do app in the next episode. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned a ton of stuff and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.